Hi, and thanks for joining me for this screencast. Today, we're going to take a look at how to set up a roast and then leverage the tools available in the roast analyzer to help us stay on target with our past roast data. If you've used Roastmaster, you're probably familiar with the roast console. This is the view you see when you create a new roast. Here, you record which beans or blends you're roasting and the weight of each item, as well as a lot of other details about the roast. You can record the roaster you're using, the associated profile or program, any static custom roaster settings you track, and also define the roasting curves you'll be recording data to. You might also be familiar with the Roast Analyzer. The Analyzer is available in several different places in Roastmaster and gives you a much more detailed, interactive view of the data of your roasts. You can analyze past roast of specific green beans or blends, or analyze roasts that are similar to a specific roast of interest. You can even use the analyzer to get a comparative overview of all of your most recent roasting activity. Lots of folks, though, are not aware that your entire roast can be performed in the roast analyzer from start to finish. In the roast console, all you need to do is to first configure the roast and then load the data you're interested in having available to you in the analyzer. You do this simply by selecting the criteria you want to filter by. Then, once you launch the analyzer from the roast console, you'll be able to call up any particular roast from this data and target it individually. If instead you're targeting a profile or program, you'll have the freedom to easily switch targeting modes on the fly to focus on a particular roast based on curve similarity or the cupping data you've recorded. You can start and stop the rows from the analyzer, record crack times, enter curve data to several different curves during the rows. But the best thing about the analyzer is that it provides you a hands-on and interactive view of the roast data you want to see. It is designed to keep your roast on track with your target data, as well as to give you the freedom to experiment based on the past roast and cupping data you see displayed. So let's get started. We'll just make a new roast, and here we have the roast console. We just need to configure the roast with our roasted item. In this case, we're doing Ethiopian Yergachev, and we're roasting 227 grams. And we'll tag our quest roaster and choose our November Fidgets profile. We can scroll down and see that we've gained a total of six different curves. These are all defined in the profile we chose. We have two reading curves, bean mass and drum temp. They're the actual temperature curves we're going to use as targets. We also have two control curves defined, heat and fan. They're going to tell us how to adjust the roaster settings as we go to achieve our target temps. These four curves are our target curves with actual data. We also have two curve templates defined. When you use a profile with curve templates, Roastmaster will create new, empty copies of those templates directly in the roast for the purpose of collecting data. In our case, we've defined these to be automatically bound to separate thermocouples via the data logging option, and our curves will be automatically sampling temperature data throughout the roast. Now, you don't need to work with profiles per se in Roastmaster. If you want to record data during a roast, you can also simply create the curves you need manually by tapping the Curve button, then Add Curve, then just give it an appropriate name, uh, bean mass in our case, set the curve type and the measurement scale you like to use, and give it a color if you like. I typically use green for bean mass then save it. Then during the roast with this curve selected just tap the digital readout in either the roast console or the analyzer to quickly enter the temps you observe as the roast progresses. Okay without further ado we'll start the roast. We'll just find some relevant data for the analyzer filter by bean and uh, also filter by weight so that we'll find only roast of Ethiopian Yergachev at 227 grams. Now we could also find roast manual if you wanted to. Just flip this guy over, uh, choose the roast that you want to populate with. But in this case, we're good with what we have. We'll just launch the analyzer and wait for our temps to come up to uh, our drop temp. 
While we wait, let's have a look at some of the features of the analyzer. Tapping this little disclosure symbol will show or hide the control panel. The control panel opens to the roast controls pane and we can see our start stop button. Simply tap once to start the roast and tap again to finish it. We also have our first and second crack buttons. You can use these buttons to record both the start and stop times of each set of cracks. The first tap sets a start point. Once the start point is set, every subsequent tap extends the crack duration. If you make a mistake, just tap and hold the appropriate button and you'll be able to clear either the duration or all of the crack data. Now we can tap the pane icon here and switch over to the graph control pane. Here we have four buttons. Target mode controls which curves are being displayed in the graph as well as what style they're drawn in. We have one of four modes available. Profile program mode, past roast mode, all or none. Next up we have our labels button to specify which labels are shown on the graph. We have four label modes as well. Milestone, curve, all or none. Next is our graph margins button. This creates a, a small margin around the live area of the graph and it's useful if you find yourself needing to view or select nodes that lie at zero on either the X or Y axis. Keeping the margin off though gives a better viewing and scrolling experience so I only enable that when I need it. Finally we have the temperature projection marker button. If a reading curve is selected you'll be able to tap this button to create a draggable projection marker that will stay locked to a point in time ahead of the current time of the roast. You can drag this marker forward and backward to adjust the offset. With a projection marker enabled, Roastmaster constantly monitors the behavior of the curve and uses a differential formula to predict the future temperature of that curve, taking into account the current rise of the curve as well as the recent momentum the curve has displayed. When used in conjunction with data logging and the live temperature deltas displayed at the top of the screen, you'll be well equipped to keep your roast on track. Now let's load some past roast data so we'll have a good idea of when to expect our cracks and see exactly what duration and curves have worked the best for us in the recent past. We'll quickly toggle through the modes to show the differences starting with profile program, off, all, and finally past roast targeting mode. In past roast mode our current roast curves are displayed as solid and our past roast curves are displayed as dotted. To browse we'll just swipe our finger along the bottom axis and pan through the past roast we loaded in the roast console. As we go the average cupping scores of those roasts are displayed along the y-axis to tell us how well each particular roast cupped. You can see a detail panel has appeared here at the bottom to give us some general information about the past roast currently being displayed. This will hide itself again after a few seconds but we can lock it into place by tapping the magnifying glass here at the bottom and slowly step through each roast until we find the one we want. Uh, 92.5 that's a great score and that's the one we'll use. Now we could stay here and simply target that roast as we see it now. In this example though there's actually no difference because that is the roast we created the profile from. But we later added our control curves to that profile so we'll switch back to profile targeting mode and target that instead so we can see all of the curves we're interested in. And once our temps are up to the proper level we'll drop the beans into the roaster as we press the start button in Roastmaster and our roast is underway. Okay, let's speed things up a bit. In this screencast, we're using the data logging option with wireless thermocouples, so we don't actually have any work to do except for keeping an eye on our control curves down here and emulating those settings on the roaster as we go. If we were entering temps manually though, we just select the appropriate curve and tap the digital readout and quickly enter the temps we observe on the roaster itself. To select a curve in Roastmaster, you can tap directly on the curve or two finger tap to bring up a chooser list and select from that instead. Okay, let's talk a little bit about a few tools the analyzer provides to really help you keep your roast on track. The first is curve labels. 
With curve labels enabled, you'll be able to easily see the levels of your current roast side by side contrasted with your target roast. The current targeting mode of the analyzer dictates how and where these labels are drawn, so you'll probably want to be in either the profile program or past roast targeting mode in order to get the most out of using labels. The second tool is curve deltas. Whether you're trying to exactly match a set of curves or rather are experimenting with a new combination, you'll probably want to keep an eye on the deltas of the curves you're monitoring. Deltas are reported in the top section of the analyzer for the selected curve. Now data logging users will see actual live temperature deltas for the selected curve at the current point in the roast. This is pulled directly from the probe data and is accurate down to the second. You can also select any past curve to see the delta of that curve at the current point in the roast or select an individual node to see the delta ahead or behind of the current point in the roast. Comparing deltas among curves is a great way to stay on track. The third and final tool, and arguably the easiest and most informative one, is projection markers. Just select the curve you're interested in monitoring and tap the projection marker button in the control panel and a marker will appear on the graph and stay a fixed time ahead of the current time wiper to give you a good idea of where that curve is headed based on its current rise and recent momentum. It's perhaps the quickest way to see the roaster control changes you make really affect the temperatures you're seeing in the graph. As soon as a probe starts to veer off its original course, the projection marker will immediately follow suit and show you where the current trend is headed. Okay, so that about covers it for the major feature tour. The last things I wanted to touch on today are the preference settings that affect the analyzer. These are located in Utilities, Preferences. Okay, we can see graph element opacities. These dictate how each of the corresponding graph elements are drawn. In other words, how transparent they are. Lower values will be lighter and more transparent while higher values will be stronger and more opaque. You can use these to pretty much customize the graph you know, based on what color your curves are um, versus you know, how many curves you're, you're using. Um, whatever you need to really make the information stand out for you. Customizable deltas. Deltas by definition are a reading of how much a curve has changed over a given period of time. In our case, that's seconds. The analyzer will show up to three separate deltas. You configure the times you want to use here. Just enter any value uh, up to 120 or enter zero to disable that particular delta. Control curve plot height. This affects how high control curves will be graphed as a percentage of the entire available graph height. If you work with both control and reading curves, you'll probably want to set this setting to a value lower than 50%. This keeps control curves anchored more toward the bottom of the screen and out of the way of the active area of the reading curves. The last two, uh, max graph temp and set point alerts, are in the roasting console section because they apply to both the console and the analyzer. Max graph temp. This value controls the range of temperature values the graphs will represent in their reading curves starting at zero and ending at this number. This setting only affects the visual height of the curves not the actual curve node values themselves. A higher number here results in curves being graphed with a shorter vertical height while a smaller number results in curves being graphed with a taller vertical height. And finally set point alerts. I really recommend you make sure this feature is turned on if you're working with um, existing control curves that dictate you know, how your roast progress. When you're roasting in either the roast console or roast analyzer, set point alerts will provide you with dialogue alerts whenever existing control curve values change. This is very helpful for ensuring you do not forget to adjust a roaster setting at the key points you have to find in, in your roasting curves. Well, that just about concludes our talk today. All that remains is to use the crack buttons to enter the crack times we're observing. 
we just set our initial crack onset with the first tap and then extend the duration with each subsequent tap. And when we're ready, we'll stop the roast and roast master as we start cooling the beans and our roast is finished. So today we've covered a lot of the features of the roast analyzer, as well as learning a little bit about roast profiles. We've learned how to configure a roast in the roast console, load the past roast we want to have available to us as we roast, then use that data in conjunction with our profile data to perform a roast entirely in the analyzer. We've learned how to choose which sets of data we want to target, as well as some of the helpful tools that Roastmaster provides to enable us to stay on those targets as we roast. I really hope you've enjoyed this screencast. Please do check back often. We'll be adding a number of screencasts in the very near future to help you get the most out of using Roastmaster.